Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, talk. Uh, well, you may find that uh, the title of the talk is a little bit different from what is listed there. I think uh, with the recent development, uh, with the uh, the uh, news we have seen related to Boeing, I think uh, we can talk a little bit more about uh, the uh, Battery. And uh, if uh, you notice that uh, when this uh, airplane was first tried, that's the words uh, from uh, President uh, Obama. It was lighter, faster, more fuel efficient, and it looks cool. So, so that's what he said. But shortly after that, of course, we heard the director of uh, NTSB, Deborah, she said, uh, we have not ruled out anything that uh, as a potential factor talking about in the uh, in the battery fire. It's not only once, it's twice. So, so many questions remain to be answered. Well, obviously today I'm not here to answer questions for this, but uh, I have prepared something that uh, uh, hopefully will answer some of your questions related to something in your pocket, and also related to what will be our future business. But before I switch topic, so I just want to uh, give you a little bit uh, background regarding why so this new uh, airplane uh, got this kind of problem, not the others. But in fact, well, in addition to different kind of uh, materials they use, and uh, one major difference between the previous and the current 787 that is the usage of battery. All before they use uh, nickel metal hydrogen, and then right now they use lithium iron battery. Lithium iron battery, where they are located, one is here, the other is there, and uh, so both uh, racks seems uh, give some problems to burn for the uh, operation. And uh, after the fire, people worry about uh, whether or not uh, this uh, plane would uh, ever fly again. Well, if you look at the uh, stock market, seems after January, so they do not have very much uh, you know, flow. In fact, it is increasing. And people are very much uh, confident about the company, and I think also about the battery, because uh, the you know the most advanced technology so far, and uh, I'm sure that uh, they could solve the problem and uh, uh, get the uh, airplane going ahead. So we don't worry about going and uh, what uh, are the opportunities for us, because uh, when we're talking about uh, these main batteries, so one is, that is for the power, uh, auxiliary power for the airplane, but in fact, what I see for us, probably, is that the business opportunities lies behind this. It's foggy, we cannot see very much, and uh, hopefully we haven't uh, seen anything like this. This is what, what happened in LA, smoke. During that time, people were very much scared. But in Beijing, well, what we have now is the mask. And uh, this is a uh, we're cotton mask. And the reason behind this smoke, we all know that uh, is, um, in fact, because of the cars on the street. And so this is one of the major reasons, and of course another reason is uh, using uh, extensive use of coal. And uh, this fossil fuel powered uh, automobile that uh, gives uh, those pollutants that generates uh, uh, this uh, smoke. And when we're talking about uh, cars, the number of cars uh, increases 30% more cars every 10 years. And in China, that is even more than that, uh, 30% because of the fast growth of the economy. 
And uh, one time, a uh, former dean asked me, oh, uh, what do you think? When is the, the mature time for the automobile used uh, production in China? So I told him that once every house has a car or two, otherwise, uh, you know, you cannot see the stock increase of the number of cars. And with the current operation of the cars, we cannot really get rid of the proteins uh, uh, satisfactory. And uh, what are the options? So one option that will be electric vehicle, which has uh, a very small amount of energy or no emission of uh, pollutants in usage of the car. But in fact, when we're talking about uh, the uh, Electro vehicle. This is not a new concept. You have seen this, and uh, when it was when the car was uh, used in the uh, early 1900s, say the number of uh, electrical vehicle, in fact, you know, exceeds significantly of the thermal internal combustion engine. But uh, unfortunately, but uh, so the progress of uh, Battery uh, production and uh, perfection cannot uh, match with the progress of the thermal engine. And uh, now we have seen that uh, most of the cars on the street is based on the internal combustion engine rather than based on the electric vehicle. In fact, this electric vehicle was uh, not too bad. So, so uh, it has uh, speed over 100 kilometers per hour. And with such kind of car, it can run 80 kilometers with the battery powering. Well, well, this is something that uh, what I, in our pocket now, it, it, it was at that time, so the battery was so huge. Okay, so. Now, what is the uh, evolution since the uh, lead acid uh, from the 1860s. In fact, if this is a timeline. As we go from that time to now, in fact, uh, majorly we have passed the one, two, three type of uh, uh, batteries. So that is uh, nickel cadmium and the nickel metal hybrids. And majority of the batteries for the uh, uh, hybrid cars now use this. As I told you, that uh, for the own uh, airplanes before 787, they used this kind of battery. And uh, well, in the early 1990s, we have this kind of battery available. And now, this kind of battery is for most of those portable devices. The majority is powered by this type of battery. And uh, well, what's the difference between this and that? Basically, that's the size. If this is a small unit and large packs. Once we have large packs, and we have uh, lots of energy packed in that unit, and then we need better management of the battery, and also in terms of uh, safety, misuse, operations, things like that. That becomes very, very important. And in terms of uh, the progress, we're talking about claiming at high energy and also high power. What are the uh, range, roughly? Uh, depends on the uh, you know, different kinds of companies' uh, production or uh, you know, how you make it. Uh, roughly, we're talking about <coughs> lead acid. So one kilogram of the um, battery can deliver 30 watt hour of the uh, energy. And right now, when we're talking about lithium ion battery, that's a six times of that. So basically, you know, two times of this, and then a, a little bit of progress with uh, nickel metal hybrid. And right now, we are talking about this. Okay. Well, from the uh, hydrogen to lithium, right, why we need uh, that? Basically, we want to have this energy. At one given 
mass of given volume, we want to have more energy in it so that uh, it can give uh, uh, longer operation or can drive the car a little bit farther away. And energy, uh, in fact, is uh, uh, for the capacity is easy. It's a capacity times the uh, potential. But the capacity-wise, it's not that easy to find the new materials for that. But uh, get the potential a little bit higher, chemistry speaking, so we have lots of room there. And with hydrogen, we have a limitation that is the voltage is uh, around 1.2 volts. So that is uh, relatively low. And uh, lithium, why lithium? Well, lithium, we know that the light is the light bulb on Earth. Okay, that uh, you cannot find any metal that is lighter than lithium. And also, it has the most reducing power. Okay, so that is minus 3.04 uh, with the uh, standard uh, electrode. So the light is the most reducing, and uh, so ideally, that would be a good choice. But the only thing is, we all know that uh, lithium will react with water vigorously. So that's why you see for all those lithium product, lithium iron production plants, they have this, uh, uh, their uh, either, well, maybe, Factory, they have a very special kind of uh, plant house. Make sure that the water content, the humidity is low, because you do not want uh, the lithium to react with water. And uh, because of that, also they requires organic electrolyte in operation. So that's why if you have a leaka leakage from the battery, and that leakage is this organic electrolyte. If temperature is high, then flame is inevitable. So if you have leakage from the uh, battery, so that is a problem. Okay. If the temperature of the battery is high, and then this is also uh, very likely to cause fire. And because um, uh, of uh, that uh, advantage is for the losing lithium. Well, we have the lithium metal is so good. And uh, so people start uh, making use of that. And uh, first, we talk about lithium metal battery. And because uh, lithium metal is the one before lithium iron. When we talk about lithium battery, nowadays we're talking about lithium iron battery. But before that, in fact, we start with lithium metal battery. Lithium ba metal battery is basically well, we have this uh, lithium metal that's uh, used as the anode, and then for the cathode material, it can insert into the structure here, like uh, those two types of uh, uh, compounds. Okay. And uh, so at the other side, we only have uh, lithium metal. And this was first proposed in 1975 and the commercialized 86 by Bolly Energy. And what happens is, well, this kind of uh, material or this kind of uh, battery, because of this uh, charging, discharging of uh, the battery. We're talking about secondary battery. And this lithium after maybe 100, 200 circles. So initially, you have a metal fill. After many, many rounds of uh, charging, then they build up this uh, centrifuge. And this is the picture of that. And you have the anode and the cathode connected. When I know the cathode is connected, you have a short circuit. When there is a short circuit, there is a high temperature because of the uh, uh, current, very high. When the temperature is high, because of organic electrolyte, this is what is expected. And because of this, so 
this metal battery nowadays is not there any, anymore for most of cases. If you use organic electrolyte because of this and because of uh, explosion. And what is the uh, solution? In fact, for solution of that, one solution now people are talking about is to use polymer electrolyte, not organic uh, solvent, polymer electrolyte. Then this electrolyte could withstand the uh, pressure that would not, so that this uh, uh, dentin will not penetrate, so that it will not have short circuit. And even you have short circuits, they will not cause fire. Okay? Another one, of course, is uh, instead of having metal of lithium, so now we have another type of material as anode. And this anode would keep the, uh, well, this is type of uh, polymer I'm not going to talk about. And uh, lithium iron battery with this anode, instead of having the metal there, now we use the lithium iron to transport between the cathode and the anode. And here, you know, the lithium, once it's uh, charged, this state, just like uh, on shell or in different kinds of uh, compartments, you will not have this uh, problem of uh, the dentrous building or have less problem of the dangerous building. And the most common material now that is uh, graphite for this kind. And this become uh, commercialized uh, by Sony in 1990s. And uh, well, at this site, for the positive or cathode material, it's lithium cobalt oxide. And this is also the material that is used for the Born 787. And it's the same material for most of those uh, uh, PC and also the uh, iPhone, and things like that, so we're talking about. So this is the uh, uh, chemical type of uh, lithium iron battery. The problem for this one is the material is expensive. And the high temperature stability of the material is low. If the temperature is over 200 degrees C, so you expect to have uh, degraded performance or the uh, failure of the system. Okay? And of course, uh, fire, you already see. It. So, uh, what uh, are the criteria if we look for more or better materials for the electron? In fact, here at least the four of them. So high electronic conductivity to make sure that uh, when you have electrical communication there, the internal resistance is low so that uh, does not generate uh, overheating. Next one is a fast diffusion of uh, lithium, so that uh, if you want to have power, so you have energy there, you want to have power, that means that at a given amount of time, deliver the energy out. So this diffusion of that is very important, because now we see for lithium iron, iron they are not uh, there for lithium metal to be standing free. You have uh, two electrodes and each electrode housing the lithium ion battery inside the uh, uh, structure of the material. Next one is the empty uh, crystallographic size so that lithium could go in and get up. And the next one, well, this is talking about the uh, later on for manufacturing. Make sure that uh, the, you can afford to have large particles for better processing or industrialization later on making the electrons. And uh, with these ideas, in fact, so far we have not found uh, many choices. And on the market, uh, we have the, uh, the number of interesting ca candidates, in fact, basically we're talking about lithium cobalt oxide. 
and uh, lithium uh, nickel oxide and uh, magnesium oxides. And uh, combination of them and also. And what we see here, see all of that in terms of chemistry, we have uh, one electron exchange during charge and discharge. And uh, so what is the um, progress uh, in terms of uh, uh, making our material that uh, could fit to our criteria or closer to our criteria? In terms of technology, we're talking about we could have different kind of combination of the composition and have different kind of structure. And the next slide, we're talking about using different kind of size of the materials. So this uh, size of the materials, we, in the past uh, 10 to 15 years, we're talking about uh, from micro to nano materials. In fact, nanomaterials is uh, so important that uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, before the available of nanotechnology, so this material, lithium ferrous phosphate. So if you hear about this, you say iron electrode or iron battery. So most of that is based on this. And uh, without the nanotechnology, and that material was found, but uh, not considered as a viable material for making battery because itself is insulated. So now with nanotechnology and also with the carbon coating, and this material becomes one of the uh, uh, most uh, popular material nowadays for making batteries for the power tools and also for electrical vehicles. Okay. And, uh, how about other options we have? Well, in fact, besides what we have seen for lithium iron phosphate and this material that is very common in the portable <coughs> devices, and now in the market, <coughs> on the market we also have this uh, lithium uh, uh, magnesium oxide. And what you see here, so this type of material is a layered material so that you have uh, the lithium in and out uh, between the layers. And this material <coughs> it has a shape of uh, aluminum shape. <coughs> and this one is a uh, spinal type of material. So um, what we see here, so that's uh, the voltage we're talking about. The higher the voltage, so the smaller <coughs> the amount you, you would expect to have for the same amount of energy. See, um, for example, this material can up to five volts. And uh, for this material, 4.2, and this material, basically you can have uh, up to 3.8, something like that, okay? And uh, these two types of materials, people now studying them, but uh, it's not in large production or usage yet. And this is about the um, cathode or positive. And about the anode, well, majority of the material is still graphite. Different types of uh, graphite from uh, uh, natural or from uh, artificial and the different type of uh, processed graphite. And or titanium oxide and uh, silicon based or now they're talking about uh, lithium tantalate, okay? So that could uh, also be used. And uh, recently people also studied that uh, of uh, tin oxides as the uh, anode material. So basically what they want is to increase the capacity. Means that you use less amount of the material but the store the maximum possible amount of energy in it. So the specific energy. And when we're talking about this, so this curve is um, more often referred because uh, uh, right on flux. And this side, we're talking about uh, specific power. And this, we're talking about the specific energy density. For the, uh, 
Well, basically we're talking about uh, when, when you want to have high specific power, means that at a given time, you deliver the uh, for short time to deliver the power and just like uh, run 100 meters, things like that. Okay, so supercapacitor probably is the one people always talk about. Very fast, a few seconds, deliver the whole uh, uh, energy up. And for the uh, energy part, so we talk about uh, that could last long uh, with all the energy better utilized, probably that is uh, for the marathon like uh, uh, running, things like this. When we're talking about battery, in fact, the battery works between this and that, okay? And for different kind of uh, batteries, different operations, lead acid, nickel, uh, metal hydrate, lithium polymer, and lithium ion battery range from here to there. Okay. What are other opportunities? We're talking about lithium ion batteries. In fact, lithium ion batteries, there is a large and diversified market from what we have already use every day, and potential markets for the EV, and the next one is large market for the power storage. And for power storage, in fact, the market is, uh, so far, we only have uh, less than 1.5% using batteries. There's a uh, lot of room for that. And also stationary markets uh, for power storage is uh, expanding a little bit, okay? And uh, when we're talking about the lithium battery come back, so what is the challenges? Well, cost is one thing, everybody knows the expectancy, and the top one probably is uh, still now, we talk about safety. So uh, for the cost, here are a few numbers we're talking about. For example, with one, uh, 15 kilowatt hour, so with this kind of, uh, uh, car usage, now we talk about 7,500 US dollars. And if we have HEV, so that's maybe 35,000 dollars. That's very high. What are our goals? In fact, nowadays, so the per kilowatt hour costs about 400 to 500 US dollars. So our aim is to have it down to 100 US dollars. And the next one is the energy density. We're talking about uh, 150 and 100, and double that to 250 to 300 uh, double hour per kilogram. Okay. And of course, safety. So we do not really expect to have explosions once it's in usage. So the problems causing that has to be properly managed. And this is, uh, well, the technical talking about why it happens, uh, I, I will skip it. Okay. And the next one is talking about the uh, uh, battery in energy storage. So how battery perform in energy storage? When we're talking one kilowatt hour, well, if we, for that kind of energy, gravitational, you're talking about uh, one cubic meter or one ton of water. Four over cliff that is uh, 367 meter. So that is uh, pretty impressive uh, energy. And when we're talking about kinetic energy, equivalent is like this. And if we put that you know, thermal energy, what well, you're talking about when you use it in lithium ion batteries, or if we change from 100 to 150, okay, uh, after our per kilogram with the heat capacity of the battery talking about 1.5 and if the heat during this uh, change of uh, charge and discharge charge and discharge if the heat is totally absorbed internally you expect to have temperature change over 200 degrees C so the temperature control or thermal control of the large battery is very, very important. Without proper control, then 
possibility of serious accident is there. And, uh, you know, from the news, uh, we're talking about the batteries uh, for 787. They say we do not have uh, problems of overcharge because uh, they have uh, upper limit. They have battery manager system for the voltage. But uh, whether or not they have uh, proper temperature control, we do not know. I think, obviously, the proper internal temperature control was not there. Otherwise, you would not expect to have uh, uh, ex uh, explosion or flame. Well, in terms of uh, safety, how can they, can we, you know, to improve the safety? Well, we all know that uh, zero risk uh, does not exist. But we could minimize the risk by doing a few things. For example, so from the cell design, electronics, or from the pressure limiting valve, or from thermal management, or from battery monitoring system, and all that is battery management system up to that. But mainly, I think, if we could not have improved chemistry, if the materials or composition components of the battery is viable for the uh, accident, then you cannot uh, avoid that. And another thing we're talking about, elect electrolytes additives. Right now, most of the electrolytes, we're talking about the organic solvents. So people are still not, uh, trying to figure out whether or not to find, be able to find good conducting polymers or ionic liquid to give the comparable conductivity. Okay? And uh, coating of the materials to improve the electronic conductivity and shut down additives. So basically, what we were talking about uh, battery. There is another thing I did not mention about this. Between the anode and the cathode, there's also one separator, then which separates the anode and the cathode, so make sure they are not uh, uh, short-circuited. And uh, for that material, so it can be so designed that when temperature increase to a certain level, then it has a shutdown option so that uh, there is no electrical transfer. Then the battery simply stopped rather than just uh, having a short circuit for having run down. And uh, well, SEI uh, modifier, so that is uh, something too technical. I will not talk about it. And uh, of course, the material chemistry, we're talking about using different kinds of uh, materials and uh, safer materials. And uh, lithium cobalt oxide is viable for high temperature uh, condition. But right now, we will be talking about lithium iron phosphates or lithium uh, magnesium oxides. So uh, most of that uh, problem could be uh, uh, minimized. So, so uh, what is the uh, next thing? Next thing, uh, before the lunch, and uh, I had some friends asking this question. So how so long the battery can last? Well, I spent so much money on the battery. And um, so can I use it for one year, two years, three years, 10 years? Because uh, the longer the battery life is, and the you know, potential, the, the cost uh, for using the battery, of course, is uh, shorter. Even the unit price is the same. So the durability, that is uh, very important. And durability, well, work is needed uh, to close this gap of between what we expect, 10 years. And now, most of those lithium iron phosphates uh, produced in China, maybe it's three or even less. So uh, when we talk about this, okay, so we need really from research, from user, we all need to have something to do together and so that so we could improve the battery durability and doing something like uh, slow reaction kinetics and also you know, have the material properties uh, uh, 
uh, very well known, and after many years usage, still they can be as uh, good as before. Okay, so this is uh, from the university, from the uh, uh, industry, and also from users. So all that uh, are important for the durability. And uh, next thing is about uh, the autonomy we talk about, or energy density. So you have seen this uh, picture before. And this picture simply this gives us the uh, direction so where to find the material that uh, for a given mass, then you can deliver more energy. And uh, so the more, the better. And we know that uh, for the high voltage, so from uh, hydrogen to lithium, we already jump from one volt to over three volts. And right now, people are talking about uh, the material I can give the voltage above volts, up to five volts, even beyond. Okay, so that will be the, uh, uh, definitely is a future development for the material study. And the next thing, of course, is to try to, instead of having one lithium, you have more than one, you know, two or one and a half during the operation. So that will push this, this side. Right now, we are research using different kind of uh, uh, compounds. Uh, this is a technical one uh, that uh, has been published uh, in literature. And uh, well, now, when we talk about cars, you see the internal combustion engine is much better than lithium ion battery. And how how better? When we talk about this, when we use uh, gasoline, one kilogram of gasoline delivers two thousand watt hour of energy. And now we're talking about lithium ion battery, we talk about nominally one fifty watt hour per kilo. And that we'll be talking about the difference is factor of 15. So that's a very big uh, gap. So we have to <coughs> make sure that this one got to be increased. Right now, if we can double that, probably that uh, uh, most of the user will feel acceptable about using this uh, EV. Okay. And, uh, how can we double that? In fact, finding new materials is one thing, and another one is finding new battery systems. So listed here, there are quite uh, a number. One is talking about lithium sulfur. Well, when we're talking about lithium iron today, we talk about this is theoretical, you have that. And the thin air, you have that. And the lithium sulfur, you have, uh, it's about, uh, eight times of lithium iron capacity, and lithium air, and it's even higher uh, capacity in terms of uh, theoretical value, okay? So certainly, if we want to compete with uh, gasoline, so lithium iron is, is what we have now, and those kind of batteries maybe come to play in future. Uh, this is the chemistry about lithium sulfur, lithium air, so uh, I don't need to explain that much, but uh, it's similar to what we have seen for the lithium and battery. And, uh, well, so this is the picture that was given by Professor John Murray Tarascon. So he now is is going to head the French Energy Institute, and he is a world expert on the lithium ion battery materials uh, synthesis. So this is what, uh, according to him, right now we are talking about somewhere here, and in future, possibly, so 20, 30 years later, maybe have lithium sulfur in the market and lithium air. Well, right now, still question where the, in future they are going to be in the market. Uh, but the potential 
definitely is there. And uh, next one, we're talking about uh, is material manufacturing. Because when we're talking about lithium ion battery, we use that to protect the environment, to, um, uh, to uh, save the material for sustainable development of a society. And uh, right now, we'll be talking about production of the materials. In fact, that is not much environmental friendly. It's using high temperature, high pressure sometimes. And eventually, we'll be talking about uh, the progress in future. Probably, we could use hydrothermal process and anorthermal process to reduce the temperature and also to have a better utilization of the atoms. And, uh, well, hopefully, many, many years later, so the materials could be produced at room temperature and be conditioned using biological process. Okay. So this is one thing. Another one, we'll be talking about sustainable development. So um, our council shares very much interest in this. So how can we, we have uh, the batteries? And we have used uh, so many of them. And uh, eventually, are they going to be a root and source themselves? Uh, for current practice, yes. We, if we do not collect them and recycle them, they will build up and pile up as waste. Uh, but there are technologies available once we have the skill of the economy to recycle the battery and then to separate the batteries into useful components. For example, lithium, cobalt, and uh, also aluminum, copper, you know, you know. For the polymers of other things, probably uh, from the technology I know now, maybe you just simply burn them for energy. And this is a picture, a rosy picture. I think in future, we could realize it with the technology progress. Basically, from biomass, we extract some organic chemicals. Okay, biomass that is grown in the field. And those chemicals could be used with uh, green chemistry to produce materials for battery. Okay, with some lithium involved, which is lithium with organic. It's very easy to separate. And once you burn the organic, lithium could form lithium carbonate. And uh, that uh, is uh, uh, a salt. And we can recover the lithium easily. And after that, then the you know, CO2 goes back to the environment and then help produce more biomaterials. So this uh, is possibly one way of a sustainable development for future lithium and batteries. And uh, well, you must be curious about uh, what I have done, right? So uh, all the talks up to now is uh, the uh, background information and what is happening regarding the lithium and battery. What we have done in the lab. Quickly, I'll show you. Well, this is the major components of a battery. You have anode, separator, electrolyte, and the cathode. Mm -hmm. And in my lab, well, we have uh, quite a number of people and the professors uh, work together. And we have, you know that in USD, we have uh, facilities available also working on the materials of anode materials, separator, and also cathode, three of them. And uh, we have five patents, over 20 number of patents, two of them already granted uh, with regard to the, the material synthesis. And basically, we focus on the cathode, anode, and new lithium ion battery system, plus the membrane ultra high molecular weight membrane for the separator uh, beauty. Okay. So, uh, well, this is uh, some uh, details uh, of uh, four uh, 
possible projects for commercialization. So if you see, we talk about basically, you can see here that this is uh, one type of uh, cathode material, positive uh, uh, material, and this is another one. And this one, for the material, this is uh, the continuous production of this. Uh, using the uh, supercritical water process. And this is the uh, lithium, um, lithium sulfur battery. And we have uh, found that uh, for our system. So I'm sorry about uh, the, uh, uh, to the friends uh, who cannot read Chinese. But uh, later on, next page I'll show you in uh, English. Okay? So talking about uh, the um, the, this one, you have seen that the capacity is very high. And uh, comparatively, we're talking about this five times of current lithium iron battery. And this is about uh, the uh, separator using this material. So here is the uh, English translation of what uh, I have shown you about the four products. Uh, at this time, I am very happy to tell you that uh, I already have a company who want to commercialize this product with us. And uh, we are in discussion with another company talking about this. And quite a few companies showed interest in this material, but here the funding looks a little bit too high. So at this time, we uh, are still in discussion. and. Uh, well, I know that uh, everybody here in this room has some uh, uh, connections uh, with uh, UST and also uh, has interest in lithium ion batteries. Well, if we want to cooperate, probably there are following three modes. University, we always do fundamental study to know why. And with that, we produce lots of PhDs, many papers published. We are very famous. We are famous for that, you know, the HKSD, why we rank so high. But for that, if you want to cooperate, and you have to donate money to us because uh, usually, so for such kind of research, does not lead to any IP for you to make more money. However, well, we could also do applied research. For general applied research, we could have uh, common programs study, and later on, you can use of the technology, or we can also produce uh, PhD and papers and uh, help the society community. And in addition to donation, we can have IPF funding, platform research, or Guangdong Hong Kong uh, technology uh, cooperation scheme. And the next one is very specific applied. If your company has a particular project, you will simply want us to work together with you. Well, we can work together, get patents, get IPs, and we can also use contract money or use these schemes from ITI or ITF from Dome and some other ways for cooperation. And with that, I would like to conclude. So I think you agree with me that lithium ion batteries have achieved great success in the recent 20 years. Because uh, it has been with everybody now. Uh, hopefully in future, most of us can also drive lithium ion battery powered cars. And the next one we're talking about, it has uh, great potentials in future. EV, energy storage, things like that. And while well, energy capacity increase, cost reduction, safety improvement, that's called for better materials and systems. We still have uh, lots of uh, research to do. And there is a number of ways to have university and industry cooperation. Depends on our mutual interest. So, so far, I think together, we can make a difference. Thank you for your attention.